We are nothing but the things that we love. We are just composites of what we love and I think some people can kind of be turned off by that idea that we're made up of other things that we love but I actually am kind of enchanted by that idea. Pinky coral nude shade. Welcome back to the AM with Amy, which is a series that happens every single Monday here on my channel where I sit down, I do my makeup, and I chat with you, and if you like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below because I'd love to see you here every single Monday, and without further delay, let's get on into this week's episode. So my gallery wall is slowly but surely coming together. Um, I just reordered my Queeb poster. I used to have the huge one in my old room tour, uh, but I decided I want a small one so I could frame it with four other pictures. Anyways, so a few of you have notified me, but if you guys watch my old AM with Amy where I talk about the podcast that I love, Optimal Living Daily, the narrator Justin Mollick, he basically found that video and he loved it. So he actually gave me a shout out on Thursday's episode. Um, I think it's What is Stoicism? And I told all my friends and my brother about Optimal Living Daily and so I woke up that Thursday morning with so many text messages of everyone screenshotting me, uh, of everyone screenshotting the podcast and telling me, you're on the podcast, like he gave you a shout out. And so it was just a really awesome morning. And then I listened to it myself and I was freaking out because it's such a lovely, it was such a lovely um, in-depth shout out. So thank you, Justin, if you're watching this. Um, but if you could have saw my reaction in real life, I was like squealing and fangirling and ah! and just freaking out because overall I'm just a very enthusiastic person about the things that I love. If you ask anyone that knows me in real life, you would know that I'm like such a, I'm a very enthusiastic person. Um, what are we gonna do next? I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. Um, this takes up so much product. So basically he tweeted at me saying, thank you so much for the video. Be sure to listen on Thursday. And I retweeted him saying, I'm fangirling. And then he responded saying he was fanboying. And it's just, now we're emailing and I feel like I have an online friend, um, which is funny because this is honestly one of the main ways I make my friends through the internet. Um, it's just, it's wild, it's wild. Wow, 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 wow. All right, so now we're gonna set our face and this is the Laurier Mercier translucent powder. Um, I got it customized uh, with my initials at the Laurier Mercier event. Yeah. So I got this giant puff at the Laura Mercier event and it's a huge like powder puff so I don't know I decided I would use it but y'all know I don't actually set my face I like the dewy look so we're gonna go into eyeshadow beautiful colors this is a scandalous Marc Jacobs eye palette and um, I kind of want to like I always teeter from do I want to do a smoky eye and look beat or do I want to go natural but since I'm monolith, I usually always go for the beat. <laughs> but today, let's try and go for something natural. So, hmm. Should I prime my lids? We're gonna try this Marc Jacobs Coconut Primer. I haven't used primer since high school. I used to use it every single day. I'm taking this lovely middle color there with a big brush. Wow, that's a lot more pigmented than it looks. Is this a dirty brush? I think it's a dirty brush. Let's not use that. Let's use this. Is this a clean brush? No, it's just as pigmented. Oh my god. Wow, it's very pigmented. Okay, let's go back to this. Uh, so this recent interaction with Justin and me kind of made me think about fangirling and how it positively impacted my life and to me fangirling is showing a large display of overexcitement and extreme enthusiasm and support for something or someone and I I'm a fangirl for a lot of things that I love, and I love a lot of things. Um, also, I'm not sure if you can see, but I have a pimple sticker right here uh, because I, pop I popped a pimple and I didn't want it to get infected with makeup, so. Cosrx pimple pads, you are the one. I think I might just do this all over the lid. 
and then call it a day. And then this is the Mark. This whole video is almost sponsored by Mark Jacobs, but I just love their products, and this is not sponsored. Um, and like I said before, a majority of my content creator friends or the friends that I've made through the internet have been a byproduct of me just fangirling over them. And the reason why I would consider it fangirling over just, you know, liking somebody is because I would talk about them in third person or how much I adore them and I wouldn't do it thinking that they even knew I existed, one, or two, that they even knew I existed and reciprocated the love back. But more often times than not, um, because of my public display of fangirling. Um, I think I've connected with so many people who happen to know who I was and also love my channel as well and it was just kind of worlds colliding and even if they didn't know who I was just the fact that I love their channel so much because we're inclined to like people who like us as narcissistic as it sounds it's true. Um, I think just that fact alone um, allowed us to have a connection and I, I think Almost all my friends I've met on the internet have been because of my love for them or their love for me or an equal amount of fangirling in between everything else. In my industry, in the industry of bloggers and influencers and content creators, I get the rare and weird opportunity to re-meet people for the first time, meaning I get to meet people as me um, over and over again because we either meet in passing or at huge parties and I feel like I've met people for the first time even though I met them over and over just because I keep forgetting or because I just don't have any recollection of meeting them because there's it's it's just a giant network of influencers and you're always like networking so um, I when I was younger I think um, you know fangirling is has such a negative connotation and so when I was younger I didn't think it was cool to fangirl over somebody when I was 19 I met my one of my favorite content creators at an influencer dinner and we were peers and so I was sitting next to her at a dinner and I pretty much said oh hi what's your name as if I didn't know her where she went to school like what she did for a living I essentially knew everything about her but because I thought it was lame to fangirl or show my love and support for her um, I tried to keep it cool and act like I didn't know her and I was just like what's your channel and she told me and I was like oh okay I think I've seen that before mm -hmm, that's cool and I was 19 at the time I was still in school and I was in my head I was shitting bricks I was like oh my god I'm sitting next to my you know favorite influencer and honestly at that dinner we probably exchanged names didn't talk much else and honestly I, we didn't have a very good conversation because I was being nonchalant and she like clearly didn't know who I was um, and I think I and it's so funny because I got to re-meet her around like two months ago at another influencer dinner and I'm not gonna say who she is because I hope to God she doesn't I hope to dear God that she does not remember that dinner like almost four years ago but I got to re-meet her for the first time again and I just basically went balls to the wall. I was like, I love your channel. Like, I love this video. Um, I love when you talked about this. Like, your editing is so amazing. And I talked about specific things that I loved about her. And I was just, just fangirling. I was just going like wild and I was um, smiling a lot and I was just, you know, pouring out compliments. And I think I definitely made an impression on her that time and I think she definitely knows who I am now. So that's kind of one of the main ways I know uh, amongst many others of how fangirling has genuinely influenced my life for the better. I think when I was younger, I was definitely more impressionable and naive and I just wanted to be perceived a certain way but as I get older, I realize that if you love something, if you fucking love something, you should let people know, especially the thing that you love. You should let that thing know. <laughs> I'm actually going to add this thing, not all over the lid this time, I'm going to put it on the center, the balls of my lids. Wow, eyeliner does amazing things. This is the M Cosmetics Illustrative Eyeliner Brush Tip. I think one of the main reasons why people do not fangirl or publicly show their love for something or someone is because it comes off, especially in the art world, is because it comes off as unoriginal um, when in actuality nothing in this world is original, especially in the art world. And so when someone points out something on my channel like, oh, you know, this video reminds me of so-and-so or it reminds me of this video by so-and-so, I will be the first person 
person to admit. I'll be like, yes, I love so-and-so. Their videos are amazing. I draw so much inspiration for them. And I will be the first person to fangirl over the person that I um, unintentionally might have em tried to emulate. And I think it's so silly to think that um, we cannot fangirl over people because we're seen as unoriginal because we just draw so much inspiration from people. But in actuality, we are nothing but the things that we love. We are just composites of what we love and I think some people can kind of be turned off by that idea that we're made up of other things that we love but I actually am kind of enchanted by that idea that I am made up of my mom um, who I love very much, of my dog, of Sundubu, of Hot Cheetos, um, that I'm made up of all the things that I love. I think another, I'm pretty much done with eyeshadow so I only did two colors because I just don't want to. Um, this is the Sills Booster by Lancome and um, I hate the extra step of this but it makes my lashes really long actually. But I think another reason why people don't fangirl it's because it seems as though Society has made it that if you fangirl, you are kind of deemed as less than or inferior than the subject that you are fangirling over. Um, it's like in one of my favorite cartoons growing up, Daria on MTV, she was pretty much apathetic and critical of every fucking thing and she was like the coolest character in my head growing up, but as I get older, I've come to the realization that fangirling over something or someone has nothing to do with the subject of your fandom. It's like this one quote that I listened to one of my favorite people who I also fangirl over, Tavi Gevinson. I've looked up her I've looked up to her since I was 17 and she's a lot I feel like she's quite a few years younger than me. I actually wrote down something she said in her lecture um, that I was watching on YouTube. I'm gonna leave it linked up here because it's also about fangirling, but another perspective on fangirling, like fangirling over artists or musicians and stuff like that. It's cool, you should watch it. But she goes, now this little I'm just a fan thing is not to be taken as an underdog. Because here's the thing, fangirling is not purely about the subject of your fandom, it is almost entirely a reflection of you. And that is awesome. And so I think this also has to do a lot with um, one of my favorite quotes that I actually posted on the Instagram and the Twitter. And let me pull that up, let me pull up my receipts. Um, it goes, the beauty you see in me is a reflection of you, Rumi. And um, it's so funny that I love this, I came across this quote and then all this stuff that happened with like Justin and um, everything just happened because it kind of all just like fell into place. I feel like that's what happens in my life. All things kind of just fall into place randomly. It's You're not an underdog or you're not inferior or less than. Um, your ability to see something beautiful in someone else is the ability to see something beautiful in you. And I think um, that is so true because you have to really love yourself to be able to share the love with others. You have to really be able to like things about yourself to find things that you like about in others. And so um, I think more people should fangirl and I think that's why you should fangirl more often. Um, overall, they're just, and fangirling is just awesome because that means you're part of this interconnectedness of you're, you're fangirling with other fans because a lot of the things that I like or that you like, a lot of other people like as well. And just that interconnectedness makes you feel closer and I am such a fan of fangirling. <laughs> But there's also that really cheesy quote that I always see on Twitter or Tumblr and I hate to repeat it because I think it's so cheesy but, but honestly there's so much truth to it and it says your vibe attracts your tribe and I think that 100% applies to this because if you're constantly being critical or just being extremely over apathetic about things, I feel like that doesn't really attract any good or positive energy in your life. In fact, it'll probably just attract more of that same energy. And I do believe that for every action you put out, there is a reaction. And so kind of about karmic energy and just how everything comes full circle. Everything you put out into the world comes back to you. And um, 
I think when I started to become even more a fangirl, more publicly, um, it just brought so much goodness into my life. And I could give you a whole list. Just go on my whole Instagram following list and all the friends I've made. Like all of those people, it's because I either tweeted saying, oh, blah, blah, is so cool, I love her videos, or blah, blah, like I mentioned them in my favorites video, or even the podcast video I did. It's just like, just little things like that. I didn't know that he would watch it or um, that he would even care about it so the fact that the, all those things happen that we're like emailing and I have a podcast right now it's just phenomenal and I had to talk about it I had to talk about why it is so important to be a fangirl and why you should be a fangirl more often this is the Laura Mercier seduction it's a beautiful gold bronze so I'm gonna use this fan brush that is really hard and crunchy is my face even gonna like this Ow! <gasps> Yo, no, 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 I'm throwing this away. I think this might be a little too dark for me as a highlight. I actually don't know. Let me see. Yeah, this is coming off more of a bronzer, if you can tell. Why did I do this? Is this? Write a comment down below if seduction is for darker skin tones or if it should be working because I think there are weird brown spots under my eyes. I don't know why. We're gonna use the NARS in Torrid. Um, and this is super pigmented. It's so bright. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna apply some lipstick and I've been really loving like this like pinky coral nude shade. Oh my god, it actually gave me pigment. So this is actually chocolate, guys. Laura Mercier also gave us a really cute box chocolate set. I'm so surprised, it gave me an actual nude color. Um, but I pretty much ate everything. There's these sugar lips on top. Now, this is the real lipstick. And this is my favorite lipstick of all time. And this is the Rouge Coco 406 in Antoinette by Chanel. I'm gonna coat it with the Fenty Booty uh, Gloss Bomb. All right, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this AM with Amy. Be sure to tune in next Monday, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!